Join us today as we uh, review with uh, Ben here on, what is this thing called? This is a willow leaf ficus and you're in Agresta Gardens in Orlando, Florida. Well, there you go, join us today. So we have a, what, what type of tree is this, Ben? This, two and a half. This is the willow leaf ficus. This species was founded in Florida and is by a gentleman named Joe Samuels, who in the 1960s walked into a Miami nursery and they had a little cutting of this tree here. And uh, nobody knew what species it was, including the nursery. Joe said, I'll buy it and take it home. And he invented the cloud and called it the willow leaf ficus. The cloud has perished now, but every tree that is a willow leaf ficus is a direct cutting of Joe's one tree. Every single tree is a descendant of that one willow leaf ficus. So it's kind of cool to have a species that's Florida grown, Florida born. Uh, we don't really know much else about it beyond that. So with this willow leaf, um, right now it's uh, about the middle of June here in Orlando, Florida. And one of the things you want to do in uh, the summertime, usually a couple times a year for here, is defoliate the tree. Usually, when you're going to defoliate a tree, you're going to use scissors. Even on a ficus, you generally use scissors. But on a willow leaf, you do not. Willow leaves are very easy. You simply grab it, you yank it off, and let it hit the ground. Like that TikTok guy. Ta-da! So, you're not grabbing all the buds, you're just making the leaf come off. What's the purpose of defoliation of a, of a tropical tree? Anytime you have a tropical tree, the more leaves it has prevents the sun from hitting the trunk. When the sun hits the trunk, it provides a lot of energy to keep the leaves happy and keep it from dropping branches. So if you want your bonsai tree or your willow leaf ficus specifically to back bud, you take off all the leaves from it, and it'll push brand new branches all over the place. Up the trunk, down the trunk, up the branch, down the branch, in between the branch, crocs, what's everywhere. Willow leaf ficuses are insanely easy to ramify. What's the growth habits for these particular trees? So, like um, light conditions, soil conditions, uh, weather? For the willow leaf, you're going to want to uh, frost protect it below 40 Fahrenheit. It can freeze, but you might lose some branches for that. When it's above 95 degrees, the tree also doesn't grow and is more dormant. They don't take much water. You're going to water one of these less than you would, say, a ficus microcarpa. Um, they will rot if you like to flood it. So don't drown your tree, simply water it. Wait a day or two, water it again. If it rains, Probably no reason to either. The biggest problems we see with willow leaf ficuses come from people who live outside of the state of Florida and simply don't have adequate lighting. We often see trees growing indoors and you can keep this tree inside. It will always look like this without supplemental lighting. So if you're up north and want the willow, definitely think about a good LED light of some sort or a metal halide high pressure psyllium bulb of sorts. And temperature wise, you're talking about, you know, this is like pretty much a tropical tree. Yep, it's a tropical tree. It's not a subtropical tree. So a tropical tree grows when it, the temperatures are right. For the willow leaf ficus, it grows at temperatures above 60 and below 95. That's the range. And then the fertilizing uh, regimen that you have for this particular tree? This particular tree is pretty well ramified. The branches are all in the right places. We're not trying to thicken or develop anything too much further than we are really more refinement. So if you're trying to develop a willow leaf ficus and grow out long leader branches, you're gonna to wanna to feed a little hotter with nitrogen. Whereas if you're trying to just maintain the canopy, ramify, you're gonna to to keep more of an equal balanced fertilizer. Uh, typically, you want to use uh, slow-release pebbles. 
Um, willow leaves don't have any advantage whatsoever for using organics. And so typically either liquid fertilizer or chemical pebbles. And uh, you do want to feed it kind of hot, but you only want to feed it proportionate to the amount of sunlight you're getting. So as an example, here in Orlando, we'll reasonably maintain the soil line with a, a line of chemical fertilizers. You kind of see in here some of it's compacted over time. Whereas um, if you're trying to just really thicken all the branches and make it grow really fast um, and big just to get everything, the bone structure where you need it to be, um, you're going to want to feed it a little hotter to give it more of that growth. And so you would normally, so this is around almost July, technically. This is like, yeah, we're like almost to the first week of July. Now. And you would, this is your, be your first defoliation or your second? This would be the second of the year. And you can do it again in August too, if you want. Depends on how strong the, the regrowth comes. See here in Florida, when it hits the middle of summer, all the trees go dormant. And then they begin growing after the hottest part of Florida's summer. So we technically have what we call a second summer. Awesome, so let me uh, jump in and help you out and then we'll come back to the end of this. Woohoo! All right, so after you took about, what? 10 minutes with three hands, went pretty good. Yep. Lido here helped us uh, with the defoliation and um, now the tree is mostly naked. You'll see a little bit of goofy stuff maybe here and there, but for the most part, 99% leafless. Okay, so after defoliation, what's your next, what's the next procedure in early summer? We are going to take the miraculous Robert Stevens shears, which are the best you can possibly buy, and we're going to look at each branch and look at the ramification. So let's start as an example right here. As a pad develops on a willow leaf ficus, you're going to have a light canopy of foliage here, which is great because it looks like it's a completed bonsai. It has a pad, but aha, look at the ramification. No good. We want one branch to two, to two, to two, to two, and we want it to keep splitting or bifurcating all the way down the line. In these places where we have one, two, three branches, this is already thicker right here than it is right here. Look at that. Reverse taper immediately on a reasonably new branch. So until you get rid of all the extra branches, you're not done. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at each section, usually by getting rid of the branches that grow on the top, on the bottom, and in the crotch, then your job's done. Willow leaves usually have the crotch look that goes up. So you're going anything that's going up, going down, or pretty much a, pretty much a wood standard tree, pruning. Thing. Yeah, I don't think it, like that graphic that circulates on the internet that tells you what to prune and what not to prune, that's exactly what you do on this species. Um, since ficuses are very well known for their reverse tapering, um, you really want to pay strong attention to this. So. And they come back as well in about a couple of weeks. They'll come back as a vengeance because they'll they'll yeah. pop up every and every single cut site here in Orlando. This will be completely looking like a finished tree, and again in about maybe seven or eight weeks total. That's pretty quick, and um, it, it grows very fast. So now we have a little bit better here. Um, that's a little goofy. That's probably what was causing the reverse taper. So now I have a split, a split, a split, a little extra here. We'll get rid of. And then when you come to the bottoms like this, bring it back in an inner node. Remember, you have to grow your tree into something. Don't cut it to the tree shape. You have to grow it into something. Now this pad looks a lot thinner and more obscurely empty. And it will pad out exactly the same as it did when it was all tight and conflagrated. So you're looking at the inner nodes. Mm -hmm. So if you cut it right here, will it bud back here? It'll bud here, and, here, and everywhere. here, 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 and then even here, 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 and here. Okay. Willow leaf ficus says back bud profusely everywhere. On the node? Everywhere. So it doesn't really matter. It just everywhere. Even on old wood, it just will put a branch there. Yep. So... 
hedging technique will work, but you're gonna get that reverse taper and the knuckling. That's correct. When you hedge prune your tree, you are promoting reverse taper because you have a congestion of all the branches there. One branch to two, two branches to four, and vice versa down. Awesome. All right, so I'll let you finish that and then we'll probably have a finished tree within the what? 15, 20 minutes? 15 or 20 minutes should be enough time to quickly burn through here and uh, get it all done. Cool, we'll come back to that. Awesome, all right, so we, we defoliated, went back. We went to uh, trim back all the branches down to two notes, or not two notes, but two, uh, two sections. Everything's been brought back to twos. And of course, you're gonna miss a few here and there. We cut back the silhouette. We also cut back the silhouette because we don't want this tree growing from here to here. We wanna keep everything compact. So everything's been chopped back a little bit. Okay, so what's the next regiment? So watering and fertilizing? Now what we do is we will put some more fertilizer on the tree here, just around the edges. A nice balanced fertilizer, that way it grows evenly. We're not looking to push big shoots. So we're gonna keep a balanced formula, which means roughly the same N, P, and K values. It doesn't matter if it's 666, 20, 20, 20. It doesn't matter as long as they're roughly equal. And you're talking about inorganics in this case? Inorganics, chemical release pebble fertilizers. Okay, and then full Easy sun, stuff. full sun. Full sun. Water once every day or two. That's pretty much and it. And that's it. So we'll wait for another two months probably? Within the next two months, this will have a complete full new canopy again with three times as many branches needing cut back equally as much again. Awesome. The nice part is every time that happens, when you're choosing the better branches, each time you cut the tree back, all of a sudden you realize, shit, I made a tree. And that's what we're trying to do here too. By making educated cut is, cuts, we are going to promote ramification in a nice way. We will also wire a little bit on this tree later too. Perhaps bringing this guy down here, moving these, organizing a little bit, not keeping everything flat, still keeping a little bit of movement with each of the mats. So that's it, sun, fertilizer, water, and you're good to go. Awesome. All right, you guys like them? Like, subscribe, give them a thumbs up. Let's get some comments for Ben. Thanks a lot, Ben. Cheers.